Hi guys, so today's video is another one where I go through my makeup collection. I went today through my foundations and I think they are the ones where I could definitely do most improvement next year by just using up what I have because I tend to buy the same ones anyway again and again and again. So I also put in the same category actually my concealers because I have only three, probably will narrow that down to one or two soon, and also the normal foundations and one contouring powder. Let's start maybe with the concealers. You probably have seen them already from my other videos. Um, they are from George at Asta. One is this one in this like stick form where you have a little brush at the end. It's quite yellow toned though for me. I think this was a medium number two. I do mix it up um, with the other one though, which is this one, the liquid concealer. Or oh, the other one is liquid as well, which has just like the typical applicator. This one is actually quite nice I must say. Um, I will definitely use that up. Um, I don't use concealer that often so I guess they will last me quite a long time. And then the third one was this one and it's like stick format and to be honest this one I hate for under the eyes because it's really thick and it's it just settles into the creases saying that oh it's really good if you have like a bad blemish you want to cover up because it literally covers it up really really well but apart from that I wouldn't use it for anything else I wouldn't use it for any bigger areas in the face just for tiny little spot areas to just cover it up now the next two products are foundations to be honest um, until this year I actually only I think I had liquid foundations in the past yeah I had definitely but the last few years I'm actually more into powder foundations um, I got recently though the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation in the color Shell Ivory. I do actually quite like it. Um, so far I used it a couple of times and I'm really happy with it. So I will definitely keep that one and probably will just empty the bottle. And then the other one is um, from George at Asta. It's natural one. This one is... Um, I would say medium to full coverage so it's a bit more coverage because this one is not as this one is more like of a sheer foundation um, I do like it though so if you have more like of a natural day going on it definitely works both of them I must say though don't last forever this one the wet and wild one though lasts definitely better than the George one both need to be set though with setting powder which I will get to later now the next product um, I have only one actually this is from Claudia Schiffer Collection, the contouring powder. This was the lighter one. Um, I tried it a couple of times. You can actually hardly see it. It's a really, really light powder, which I actually quite like because I do tend to go more for the natural look. And to be honest, I don't contour every day. So it happens actually very rarely that I contour. So this will last me forever, I guess. And I, I wouldn't buy any other con contour products, to be honest. Now foundation powders da -da -da -da. this one is actually nearly empty um, this is the Superstay 24 hours um, from Maybelline I will not open it because I actually dropped it earlier and I know there's chaos in there it's nearly empty though anyway I will have a look tomorrow morning and I might repress the leftovers I have I definitely like this one and I would definitely imagine to buy that one again this was in the color Fawn and I do like it. It has a really good coverage and it lasts really well during the day. Then the next one I just started to use recently. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Powder. Um, this is quite a hard one actually. So it's as you can see in this um, dome shape and it reminds me a bit of these baked powders because it's just quite hard in the compact actually. I don't know if you can see it. A little streak here. Not really. Um, it's a good, it's a good powder though. I definitely can't complain. And price wise, it's it's very cheap. I think this one was four pound forty four or something from Amazon. Then this one dropped earlier as well, so I will not open it. Um, it's actually the pressed powder. Let me have a sneak underneath natural beige. This is from Poundland, and they are actually really good as well. I do like them. They don't last as well um, as, for example, the Maybelline one, which definitely lasts a bit longer during the day, but I do like them. And if you just have an office job and you sit in the office all day, um, they will definitely do you during the day. 
I do have actually some more. Let me maybe go to these ones first. The other plant land ones as well. I just have them in different shades depending on when my summer suntan in the face goes away. Although I am quite pale. So I'm going from pale to very pale in winter. Um, I have the color sand for and translucent one. So definitely like them. Then the next one is from Kiko Milano. This is um, just a normal pressed face powder. Matte fusion pressed powder. Just color zero one. Definitely like it so far. Um, I used it a couple of times. And once I finish the Maybelline, I think this will be the last, next one. I will just try to empty. Then the next one. Um, this one is from Shiseido from the Macrilage collection. This was actually a special edition case from the Sailor Moon edition. Check out my other videos when I got it and I un unboxed it. It's quite a nice compact um, with a nice big mirror. Um, this one I used in summer a few times, but I was emptying another powder at the time, so I didn't dip too much into it. So I think this one might be actually getting uh, focus. Maybe not. No. We're not focusing so this one might be actually getting too dark now um for autumn but what i will just do i will save it for next year summer so definitely very happy with that one the couple of times i used it and the last one is from burberry this is just a normal powder this is quite sheer actually this is number two sheer foundation color trench i do like it the only thing i don't like on it. The powder itself is quite nice. It has a nice consistency, but uh, the compact itself has quite a perfumey smell. It has like this flowery smell, and I just don't like that. I don't think it's necessary. So that's why I think I didn't use it that much yet. But I will definitely use it up um, together with all my other foundations. Then in the next category, this are not really foundations. These are just lots of different setting powders. Can I just say, this is actually a typical example why I don't like the Claudia Schiffer collection. I put something on top of the compact, and because it has this really weird material on top, everything just sticks to it. But the one on top, um, this is actually from Kiko Milano, Matte Effect Finishing Powder. It's one of these typical finishing powders in a light pinky color. I really, really do like this one. It does have a bit of fallout though, so I would definitely recommend to use it with a very soft brush. Love it though, it's really, really nice. Then the next one is the No Color Setting Powder from Claudia Schiffer. This one, I used it a few times. It's really difficult to use because the product is actually the exact opposite to the Kiko Milano one. It's really, really hard. It's like having a brick of plastic and then even when you rub like crazy on it, you only have that much product. So on one side it's nice because it's very, very fine. But you do need a good brush to actually pick up the product and get it on your face. And I actually just recently bought a Wet n Wild one mattifying powder. Um, mattifying powder, take on the day. And this one seems to be so far a really good dupe for the Claudia Schiffer one. It's a bit softer than the Claudia Schiffer one. But when I rub the product, it's very very similar to the Claudia Schiffer one so I might do an extra video on that one and I compare some of my because compare some of my products because looking at my whole collection when I went through it the last few days I do have a lot of high-end but also a lot of super cheap products and I also have medium priced ones so I think I might actually do a comparison the only thing I would need then though is a medium priced one because this one is quite expensive the Claudia Schiffer one I think was 36 pound and this one was £4.44 as well. So I will definitely do another one. I might actually use the Kiko Milano as a medium priced one because I think this one was £12. Then two more setting powders I have. Um, this is the Loose Mineral Powder. This is Sheer or Trans Translucent from George Lasta. I used it a couple of times and to be honest I really really do like this one. It's very very finely milled. Um, consistency wise it reminds me a lot of the Kiko Milano one, the Invisible Touch Face Fixing Powder. They're both very similar to these ones, to the pressed ones. It's just that they're um, the loose ones. They are a bit tricky because they're loose so you have always stuff flying around when you use it so you have to be really careful. You don't have to issue with the other ones. Saying that though, if you actually want to bake um, or something like that, the loose ones are a must because you never can pick up that much product with the pressed ones but 
these ones so far again there might be a good comparison actually to from really cheap um, to medium priced because they're both very similar so far and then good old airspun i think um, everyone will really know these ones this one is still sealed and this one is an open one this one is actually in the color naturally neutral and this one is the really classic translucent one they are just humongous as you can see they have 65 gram in them in comparison this is a 13 gram one and the Kiko Milano is a 13.5 gram one so these ones are just humongous they last pretty much forever if you're someone who bakes a lot though the eye or other areas in the face of course you will go through them I definitely can recommend this one it's quite a cheap packaging so the lid is just going on top which is a bit of a pain because you can't actually properly fix the lid to the container so when you travel I usually put it in either I put it in a tight bag or I just use one of my other powders and just leave this one at home it's a really 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 good face setting powder though um, it's it's a classic and I just love it I never really use this one actually I only leave it on top because as you can see it has the holes so it would fly around otherwise and I just prefer to leave it on there just in case if it falls down one day but it's really really good and um, actually for all of the loose powders I find the easiest of them to use them is to just put a bit of powder in in the lid and then pick up with a brush from the lid the powder but yeah that's about it um, I think my plan for buying not any products next year should be fine looking on just how much I actually have so I think I could easily live with one foundation powder one good setting powder and maybe have a small liquid foundation although I think just a small one would be actually enough for me just because I don't use it as much and I would be upset if they get bad but yeah that's it um, let me know in the comments what you think about it um, any experience you had with any of the powders um, I have or if you have a really really good one to recommend to me I should try once I finished all my other ones off of course <laughs> thank you so much for watching